This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Health One. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. High altitude pulmonary edema is similar but different to the counterparts of acute mountain sickness and high altitude cerebral edema, though its pathophysiology appears similar. Acute mountain sickness does not need to be a prodrome or a precursor to high altitude pulmonary edema or HAPE. It is believed that this is caused by an elevation in pulmonary artery pressure and leaky pulmonary endothelial cells. This leads to a non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema where localized pulmonary tissues become edematous. This is not a total body fluid overload picture such as CHF and on exam you would probably not appreciate any peripheral edema. The pathophysiology of high altitude pulmonary edema is believed to be secondary to increased sympathetic stimulation, secondary to hypobaric hypoxic exposure. This leads to a pulmonary hypertensive state and an uneven hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. That vasoconstriction of that pulmonary vasculature in combination with leaky endothelial cells increases permeability and that spreads pulmonary edema into the pulmonary parenchyma unevenly. There is complex pathophysiology pathways that are able to be researched for further details of this complex disease. However, in short, it is pulmonary edema that is not cardiogenic. This happens at a relatively low frequency, but is notable in relatively lower altitudes compared to high altitude cerebral edema, and it has affected skiers in the United States West, as well as Mount Rainier, Denali, and the high peaks throughout the world. This diagnosis usually happens between day two to day four upon arriving at a new high altitude. It initially starts with decreased relative decrease in exercise tolerance and dyspnea on exertion that then becomes dyspnea at rest. It is associated with a productive wet sounding cough that is usually productive of clear frothy sputum and associated fatigue. Signs on exam would be tachycardia, tachypnea, and crackles intermittently or sometimes there is a fever but this should not stray you from this diagnosis. High altitude pulmonary edema treatment is different than the treatment for acute mountain sickness or high altitude cerebral edema. Descent is still the initial treatment, however, oxygen is necessary, and then there are multiple drugs that have been tried. The most common and most historic drug is nephetapine, which vasodilates and allows for increased flow with decreased pressure through the pulmonary vasculature. Other medicines such as nitric oxide, sildenafil, and tadenafil have been investigated and the phosphodiesterase inhibitors such as sildenafil have been proven to uh, be preventative as well. However, more studies are needed. It is not recommended to take medicine for prevention of high altitude pulmonary edema unless you have been susceptible to it in the past. These patients need descent. Their chest x-ray usually has pulmonary edema with a normal appearing cardiac silhouette showing that it is not cardiogenic heart failure and admission to the hospital until resolution of their respiratory distress. Upon descent, usually they do well once removed from a hypobaric hypoxic state. In short, for mountain sickness or diseases of altitude, the answer is descent always. The second answer is usually oxygen, acetylsalamide, or steroids. For high altitude pulmonary edema, the second answer is usually always nephetapine. There are many other diseases of altitude, including chronic mountain sickness. However, that is beyond the breadth of this emergency medical minute. Hello, EMM listeners. We are dedicated to providing you with high quality educational content free of charge and without ads. As a nonprofit organization, we rely solely on donations. So if you enjoy our show and are able to make a one-time or recurring donation to help cover our operational costs, any amount is helpful in making this show possible. Click the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you.